In this video, I show you how I built a very simple, cheap, functional, kind of minimal, cool looking railing on the front of our house. And all railings are, on residential houses at least, are supposed to be 36 inches. Um, they're a bit higher if you're uh, building one for a rental. So, but anyway, I built this guy at 36 inches. That's like the standard height and uh, started out with a two by four on top. And I'm telling you, man, this railing is really simple and easy to build. Uh, the two by four on top is um, located or placed vertically. So it's a little bit stronger. And building this alone, I just used a piece of scrap wood on one end to support it. And then at the other end, I uh, screwed it into my post at 35 and a quarter inches. That way I can have a three quarter inch uh, piece on the top. That'll get me up to that 36 inch mark. Anyway, I just leveled it up, uh, screwed it on both ends, and then uh, stuck in another two by four down below. This one down below uh, goes horizontally or flat. And you'll see why um, it allows you to kind of capture your uh, balusters as they come down. So one key consideration when you're building a railing like this is where your load is going to go. You know, like the force of things that are on that railing and I wanted mine to go down onto the deck, not onto the fasteners on the side. So I located this small two by four block in the middle and you can see the ends of my bottom two by four are uh, placed on top of some trim pieces. That distributes the load in uh, three places. Uh, right now I'm just ripping some pressure treated fence boards. These guys are I think about five inches wide and I ripped them in half. And these form my balusters, you know, the, the vertical railing pieces on the railing. And I just ripped a big batch of these guys, as you can see, a big armful, and then uh, put them in place. And after ripping those guys, I uh, cut one just to see how it was going to look and uh, held it up in place. And I thought it actually looked pretty good. Again, this is a very simple banister or railing. You know, it's not like super fancy. I want it to be kind of minimal, affordable, and easy to build. As far as gap distance, um, pretty much code requires four inches, four inches or less. So I made some four inch spacers and just tacked these balusters in place on top. That's not the final way those guys are attached, but it's just what I did at first to get them in place and started moving right along using my spacers and tacking them on the top. Again, on the bottom, you can see they're just kind of hanging loose. That's not going to be the permanent configuration. Just wait for it. You'll see how I attach those down below. But this system I found allows you to just put your balusters in really fast, like really quickly in, you know, like 10, 20 minutes. I had them all in place and was ready to move on to the next step. Uh, one thing to note is that using those using the spacers is great, but I would also recommend throwing a level on those balusters once in a while just to make sure they're coming in uh, nice and level. Uh, then I cut again on my table saw some three quarter inch by three quarter inch strips, just some little square strips. And those hold the balusters in down below along with um, some other brad nails. And this is just a brad nailer here. You could use other nails or screws or whatever, but I found a brad nailer just hold things in, holds things in place pretty well if you don't want them to wiggle. Up on top, I used some wood screws to connect the balusters to that vertically positioned two by four. That way they just have a good solid connection. They're held down below by the strips and up above with the screw. So if anyone really bangs on one of those balusters, it's not gonna fall off. All right, uh, next up was just to put that top piece in place. And I used some wood glue. Uh, that's not really a traditional with outdoor construction. Wood glue, when it gets wet, usually falls apart. But I used some wood glue anyway. I think it'll help make this a bit stronger. Um, I also, after brad nailing this, I screwed it in place. Screws are really solid. I would recommend them for a construction project like this just because they don't come out um, like nails do sometimes. Here I go screwing in the uh, top piece on the banister and check it out. Uh, just in like an hour or two, this is a nice solid banister ready to go um, in good shape. Now the porch itself is bigger than that and you can see on the left side there's just like a big gap and I needed to build a two more 
Banisters. Two more railings. I don't know why I keep calling them banisters or railings. I don't know what the difference is between those two terms. Anyway, they're pretty much the same on the left side uh, with a few small little tricks. Uh, one was that I had to notch this uh, top 2x4 just to fit it into my siding. And after doing so, I again located it at that uh, just shy of 36 inches, 35 and a quarter inches and leveled it up and secured that one in place and then secured the lower 2x4 and uh, positioned that directly below, like directly beneath that top 2x4. That's because you're gonna have your balusters come down and make contact with that uh, 2x4 down below. And other than that, this one went in just like the other one. It's just a question of uh, getting your system together and knocking those balusters in and once you do securing them on the bottom with your three quarter inch by three quarter inch strips and on the top with some screws and it kind of goes without saying that for these pieces on top you want the crown facing down that way if they do any cupping the cupping will happen in a way that allows that top piece to shed water Anyway, uh, this guy is just as strong as the first one. We've got two pieces in, hasn't taken much time. It's really a simple build. Uh, the most complicated part was probably putting in this newel post, uh, which you'll see here in a bit. Um, I put a piece of two by 12, like a nice big chunk. I put that in uh, at the base of the newel post. That just gave me something to screw into. And I did spend a little bit of time locating that. I wanted to be just in the right spot. and. I should also mention that I was planning on putting a, a second handrail on my stairs on the left side, but I opted not to do that. You'll see in the end, it's just got one handrail, a handrail on one side. And I think that's pretty good. Uh, most people, it's a little more conventional, would put in two handrails, but the one handrail just looked kind of good, and, and I, think it was, I think it was better in the end. All right, um, this newel post went in pretty simply, again, using some pressure-treated boards. And I believe it's five inches by five inches kind of square. And it's screwed together and then connects to the railing. That allows you to build something nice and strong. Uh, uh, newel posts are notorious for being kind of wiggly because you just have so much leverage if you push them on top. But if you connect them to a banister or a railing or a handrail, you're just gonna get it much more solid. Um, I also, as you can see, only half built the newel post in order to be able to screw in from the inside to those supporting 2x4s. All right, uh, one more thing, and this is just a bit of superstition. Uh, I always, when I create a cavity, I always put something of value inside the cavity. Um, in this case, I just threw a dollar or two inside and closed it up. I don't know, superstition, good luck. It's just a building practice I've always followed. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of this one, but anyway, it's what I do. And uh, after that, I just knocked out the uh, balusters along that left side and connected them like I did with the others, screws and glue and brad nail and whatnot. And that side then was ready for the cap piece. I should mention that I have used like two by sixes for the top cap. And that works really well. I just thought this um, thin stuff, these are just uh, pressure treated fence boards. I think that thin stuff looks kind of a little more, um, I don't know, kind of delicate and nice. So anyway, I went with the thin stuff. Uh, here I just made a newel post cap. I actually made two of them because I thought I was gonna need one more, but I just made, I ended up just using one of them. Uh, the newel post cap is just uh, cut with out of some, uh, cut out of some two by 12, I believe. And then I just beveled a little edge on the top and sanded it up. Nothing too ornate once again. Uh, kind of simple and clean and minimal and it did the job. All right, so with the newel post all together, it was time to just throw some primer on this guy and uh, after priming it to paint it, and Melissa came out and helped me as part of the paint crew, and that was it. Uh, you don't have to paint your banister necessarily, but we did just to tie it into the overall look of the project. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video, and I will see you in the next project.